Britain. We have become a small island, a joke nation, simply unable to deal with the world's events, such as the banking crisis or ISIS. A country that has reacted to its inability to control world events by losing control of itself, risking its unification and shocking the world media again and again and again. Is Britain still great? In the modern age, it is a word synonymous with Brexit. But go back to the Victorian era and it is remembered as the home country of a great empire. Go back to World War II and it's the country remembered as the great leader in the Western Alliance that defeated Hitler. We have always been a nation actively involved in world events for better or for worse, whether it's the times we have been conquered or the times we conquered the world. In fact, I'm speaking to you now through a language invented by this country on the internet that also happens to be invented in Britain. Yet, while we made up the population of America when we emigrated there, the company that runs this website, YouTube, isn't a British one, it is American. The garment industry found a natural home in poorer nations. The way to provide an abundance of cheap ready-made clothing is finding a huge labor pool that is paid little. Bangladesh also benefits from the European Union giving the country extra help. Because it's so poor, Europe allows Bangladesh to ship garments to the world's biggest trading bloc, duty-free. We don't own very much of significance anymore. Our clothes tend to be made in China, our cost of living is rising, and our biggest companies are pretty uninspiring compared to what countries like America or Japan have to offer. For many, Brexit was the solution to all of that. It meant that our significance was restored politically and we could therefore make bold new ventures economically without having the constant strain on public services from immigration. But those against it insist we must rely on the EU to get economic security to allow us to do all of that. Since the banking crisis in 2008, there has been a growing scepticism of bankers. Are they holding us to ransom? over the Brexit to get what they want? Will we eventually be forced to give in just because the left and those against leaving don't want us to upset the status quo? Parallels can be drawn to the Norman Conquest or the English Civil War. It's this division that makes those looking onto Brexit not see it with as much admiration. Yet our immigration levels are still higher than emigration. The murder of British MP Joe Cox shocked Britain and the world. Her killer, Thomas Mayer, a 53-year-old man with extreme right-wing views, has been sentenced for life. Since 9-11, as Islamic terrorism has increased, we have grown skeptical of anything not Christian. The morality of this country was founded on those values, and those values are what makes us skeptical of anyone who doesn't fit within our traditions and identity. For a home to feel homely, it has to be safe and peaceful, yet the lack of peace economically and politically in this country has led to a feeling of discontent. We now look down on anyone outside of our personal beliefs in a way the world has never seen. The thing we created, the internet, has led to dangerous armies of like-minded people capable of severe destruction. Yet. While it seems easy to destroy the environment we live in, when it comes to changing things, our ability is nothing. Do you know what you voted for? Yeah, absolutely. And what annoys me is when Mr. Salmon and Mrs. Thornberry tell us, it's almost like Project Fear over again. We totally. don't understand what we're voting for. Yeah. I understand. I'm not stupid. Stop, stop belittling us. You know what we voted for. What, and what, what did you vote for? I voted leave. I voted but to, no, but what did you vote for to take sovereignty you... back of our laws, to get rid of the, the um, single markets regulation, um, and to take back control of immigration. Now, I know that hasn't been put in black and white, and there's not, we don't have a definitive plan, but they were three key aspects what we voted for. So stop telling us what we didn't know what we voted for, right. because we did. We rely on the world so much that our country has become nothing more than a mirror, reflecting the corrupt media with an agenda paid for by the elite showing incompetent politicians incapable of actioning what we want and a public getting more and more frustrated yet incapable of doing anything with any significance. This country recently has seen bad Prime Minister after bad Prime Minister. 
all individually making mistakes big enough to cause the mess we are in now. The Iraq War, banking crisis, the Scottish referendum, the EU referendum and the 2017 election. All proof of decisions that have left the country in stalemate. Perhaps even left the unity of the four countries of Great Britain not even a unity at all. The not so United Kingdom. Great Britain is as much famous for James Bond as it is for Mr Bean. But at the moment we are just a piece of art, a gesture, a reflection, the package of the world rather than the product of it. Like our country, the great machines and railways of the Industrial Revolution that we founded lay in exhibits years since they operated. We voted for Brexit, but when it comes down to it, we may still be in the single market. We will have a transition period where we remain in the EU, and immigration probably won't change much in order to suit the needs of the economy. Like the revolution, Brexit currently remains a sign in a glass case as a memory of when the political machine once turned. Then there's Trump. He has postponed coming to this country twice. He doesn't care about us quite as much as we care about him. We pretend to be out of that glass case, reenacting much more significant times when in reality we're puppets, begging the world economies for trade deals and military intervention. It's Punch and Judy and we're a joke. When things do happen, it ends up in political and economic chaos. Prime Ministers resign, the pound falls and the country gets more and more divided. We voted Brexit to make us more significant in the world and it might just end up making us less so. Not because it wasn't a good idea, but because our country has done its best to make it just a gesture and ultimately that means we keep things the way they are, the way they have always been, controlled by the EU. Britain can be great if we produce on behalf of the world rather than as a result of it, make them need us. The world certainly doesn't need another politically divided country. It needs a peaceful one capable of revolutionising the world. Brexit was supposed to be just that, a peaceful way to revolutionise Europe. We mustn't lose sight of that goal, otherwise it will be too late. Do you agree with me? Join in the debate below and subscribe.